Hello, I'm Matthew Brown, a PhD candidate at Simon Fraser University. The question came up in my group as to how to make a master SIF from a series of SIFs using my method of using Olex2. The first thing to note is that the CCDC recommends depositing your SIFs one at a time from separate files. I have used this method to upload files to their database and it worked just fine as far as I can tell, but I was having a discussion with them at the American Crystallographic Association meeting in Toronto and they did not recommend doing it that way. Uh, apparently it's caused problems in half when files get resplit incorrectly. The first thing to note is I've, I've included the complete authorship information in every one of the SIFs. That makes it very easy to stick them together in an arbitrary order and have everything just work. That's totally acceptable by the SIF standard as I can read it. Um, and it means you don't have to worry if you decide to remove one from the paper or add another one to the paper. Each one is effectively an independent file, even if you've stuck them all into one master file. If you want to have a separate block of authorship information, the SIF standard does allow that. It's how the rest of my group does things. And if you were doing that, what you would simply do is make an additional SIF file uh, labeled, say, authorship.sif. And to all the instructions I'm giving you, just put that as the first SIF uh, in the line. If you're using Olex2, all that information will be in each SIF file anyway. So I'm going to show you how to do this in the DOS slash Windows command line, command.exe. Um, this would in theory work on any DOS system going back a very long way. Not that I expect anyone still using that. I will then use the Linux subsystem for Windows to show you how to do the equivalent on Linux. And then I will show you how why not to do this in PowerShell and why I don't use PowerShell. But in case for some reason you had to do this on PowerShell, you'll at least see the command so you can figure out the rest. So DOS right here, we are on my C drive right now. We need to move to the folder I've put these files in, which is on D drive. Change directory and then the path. Now you'll note we haven't actually changed to the right directory it's because DOS is old and strange so you actually have to type in the drive letter. Uh, apparently there's other ways of doing that that are faster. That one works. Now we want to type in type and then the name of whatever files we want. Uh, first dir for directory will show us what files are available. So let's go with type 2 bippy and bippy basf so that's now going to type out the contents of each one of those. If I just hit enter now, it would display the entire contents of both of those files to my screen, uh, one after the other. I'm not going to do that as it would take quite a long time. Actually, why not? Here's one, and you can see it's doing that. And we'll just stop it. I stopped it by hitting uh, control C. So. So type to bippy and then bippy bsf. And I don't want it on my screen. So I'm going to use the arrow, which means redirect to uh, dos1.sif. And there we go. I type in directory again. And now you can see dos1.sif there, created at 7.51 p.m. And that's really all there is to it. Linux command line, I've already put in the same directory. Because I'm using the subsystem for Windows, it's a bit more complicated. It uses the same change directory command. Uh, the difference is ls is its uh, show what files are here, and ls-l gives that sort of DOS more detailed interface. Um, the file on Linux is cat for concatenate. And then we'll do the same to to bippy and bippy basf. Same redirection to linux one.sif. And it's even faster. 
and there linux onecf and you can see these two are the exact same number of bytes they're exactly the same and uh, you can see if I type in the head that starts with the authorship block of 2bippy.sif they will go in the, in the in both of these cases they go in in the order you list them first file second file and so on which is how if you want to have a separate authorship file just list it first in the command and it will wind up at the top now those were both quite quick it as you saw way faster than copy and pasting especially if for whatever reason uh, you had to make changes you could then just push the up key again and you'll get the previous command back if you want to say change the order or you later on have to go and remerge them you don't have to open it with a text editor and fiddle with things that way now PowerShell I've pre-typed the command because PowerShell syntax is a pain um, these are not the exact commands they're aliases short forms uh, it will support both type and cat as an alias for its command, which is get hyphen content. And then you use the bar here. So first you have to separate each file by commas. That's a pain. Uh, the dot slash, you could do that in Linux. It means file in this directory. So dot means this directory slash, then the file name. Now here you use the pipe because you actually have to send it from one program to the other. The arrow in Linux and DOS means direct to a file. Apparently you can't do that in PowerShell, so I need to pipe it to a second program, set content, which then will save all of these files to powershell.sif. So let's do a little speed test, okay? So type, oh, and you can see I'm filling in these names so fast by hitting the tab key. And on DOS and some Linux installations, you can then uh, hit the key again to get to cycle through files with all of those names. So we're just going to go DOS.sif, done. Uh, it's a few seconds. Okay, we're on Linux. So 2 bippy, bippy, peroxo. There, I actually have to discombobulate them manually. I can't just keep t hitting the key. Uh, VPN not chain, VPN peroxo, and terpy. So that's the same list, Linux.sif. It's even faster, but close enough, right? So, same list of files. Hit enter here, and now we wait. And wait and yeah I don't know why PowerShell there we go finally uh, I don't know why PowerShell is much slower that's actually faster than when I did this the first time uh, with the first time I did this uh, some time ago it in fact would take 30 seconds or more so I just don't use PowerShell. The syntax is more painful. I mean, it's not that bad. You can do cat two, and it'll fill in there, comma, bippy. But it's still more of a pain. So, but let's hit least squares. So Linux.sif, DOS.sif, and PowerShell. PowerShell is actually slightly more. I'm not sure why. You can see the other two are exactly the same down to the number of bytes. Uh, this is probably inserting a blank line between each file. Not a problem. Uh, that would, I believe, be the right number of bytes for that. But as you can see, they're all equivalent. This will work on just about any computer invented. And it's much faster than manually, you know, going. All right, let's open up this first one. All right, control A, control C, control new, control paste. Enter, enter. All right, next one, edit, copy, paste. I mean, this will work. You'll get the exact same file. This is more of a pain to me than doing that because the more files you have, the slower this is, 
Whereas this takes, any of these take marginally more time. So I hope that's helpful. It's probably in far more detail than it needs to be, but I like being thorough. And uh, thank you for taking the time to watch my tutorial. Uh, if you find it useful, please let me know if you have recommendations, both on how I can record these tutorials or some aspect of crystallography you'd like me to record a tutorial on or uh, improvements to any of my methods, uh, please let me know. Um, the comments may not reach me. You could email me at um, Matthew or Probably the best one would be mba83 at sfu.ca or uh, Matthew Lachlan Brown at gmail.com. Uh, thank you very much and have a nice day.